It's time again to recap the latest news from the PV industry compiled by the American Solar Energy Society. I'm Jay Warmke with SolarPVTraining.com and this is what's happening in the world of solar for the week of May 26th. Well, according to data just released from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, also known as FERC, solar accounted for 86.8% of all of the new generating capacity added to the grid during the first quarter of this year. And in the month of March, solar plus storage actually accounted for 99.7% of all new energy added to the grid. Now, the Energy Information Administration, or EIA, had projected that in 2024, solar and storage would account for about 80% of all new generating capacity. And so far, the industry is right on track to meet or exceed those projections. So far this year, solar and storage accounted for about 87% of new generation. Wind was about 12.5%, and natural gas was less than 1% of all of the generating sources added to the grid. Now, currently, the grid capacity, based on fuel source, sits at natural gas. There's still the big dog at 43.79%. Coal, almost 16%. Wind, almost 12%. Solar, a little bit over 8%, nuclear, just barely over 8%, and hydro, just under 8%. Now, notably, FERC does not track the installed capacity of residential or commercial solar, only utility-scale solar. And these smaller systems, these smaller solar systems, are estimated to reflect about a third of all of the generating capacity from solar that's connected to the grid. So the current percentage is likely to be in excess of 12% rather than the reported 8% plus. Now, according to projections from FERC, over the next three years, there's a very high probability that utility scale solar share will grow to over 14%. And when you combine that with residential and commercial, that will be over 20% of the grid's capacity. And this will happen by April 1st of 2027. It will then, solar will, surpass all other generating sources with the exception of natural gas. Now, it's been a little bit over a year since California implemented Net Metering 3.0, or NEM 3.0, uh, which drastically reduced the amount that utilities will compensate customers who export power back to the grid. Now, solar advocates argued that this move uh, would devastate the um, solar industry within that state, and those projections have largely come to pass. In fact, estimates are that about 17,000 solar installers have lost their jobs or left the state since NEM 3.0 was implemented. And a recent report from Lawrence Berkeley National Labs uh, found that new installations are down about 75%. Uh, in the uh, last six months or so, there have been 50,000 new residential systems added to the grid. In California, this compares to about 200,000 that were added to the grid in the six months just prior to NEM 3.0 taking effect. The study also found that there has been a dramatic increase in the amount of storage that's being added when people install these solar systems. Uh, prior to NEM 3.0, uh, only about 10% of systems incorporated storage. After NEM 3.0, it's up to about 60% as owners of these systems opt not to export that power back to the grid at the reduced rates that they're offering. Voltage limits within the U.S. for residential systems remain at about 600 volts DC, and those installed on commercial uh, or industrial systems remain at about 1,000 volts DC. But there is no limit, uh, there's no maximum limit on voltage for ground-mounted systems, the larger utility-scale sp systems specifically. But over the last few years, these have standardized at about 1,500 volts. But all that may be changing. Jinko Solar just announced that their Eagle Series modules have been rated and listed now uh, for voltages up to 2,000 volts. Now, this will be the first module that's rated that high worldwide. Uh, the higher the voltage of a system, 
Uh, the the more panels you can put in a string, the smaller wire you can use, the um, less components. So basically, the higher the voltage, the lower the system's cost. Now these uh, high voltage panels will be available on the US market in 2025. And Amazon has announced the very first solar plus storage plus AI, artificial intelligence. Their system is called the uh, Baldy Mesa Solar Farm. It's located in Southern California's Mojave Desert. And what they're doing is they're using AI machine learning modules to uh, predict how and when to charge and discharge the batteries that are connected to these systems. This uh, is expected to analyze over 33 billion data points over the course of a year to maximize the efficiency of the system. If successful, Amazon has said that they will be incorporating storage plus artificial intelligence into all of their solar installations. And that is the news from the solar industry for this week. We'll see you next week.